everyone, it's Jules here from Jules Designs and JT Creations. So just um, a quickie, I've um, done the folder so you can see. I've stitched round it. Um, I did have problems because I used carpet tape. It's sticky and it doesn't seem to dry out. So um, I had to do a quick clean up. I've put washi tape in there obviously because... It keeps bending so what I might do is I might just coat that a little bit with some turquoise paint. Um, my one signature has now become two um, because it's becoming a, a real chunky monkey. So what was in the middle that wasn't part of the waterfall is now the bottom signature and what is the top is going to be that so that will still fit there the pages are not all straight and that will still fit there i put this on i put a little button underneath because these are quite long-legged pins um they went through that and the button and i used my sari silk and i put some like just the kiddies plastic beads but they look like the baubles the christmas baubles um and that i've also done this i've put elastic on it so it will just fit over that one or if i wanted it will fit over the whole lot just to keep it closed you know when you're not using it you just be careful of your lace or put it on that one but I'll take that off but more than likely you can even fit it inside so what I want to talk about today is normally when I put a signature into a journal I guesstimate it and sometimes I don't get it right and you know I see people on YouTube using the measurements and everything so what I decided to do was because this has now become a, two signatures I thought I'd better um do a wee graph a wee plan so what I did was I cut a piece of paper the same side size as the spine um, I, I'll give you the measurements if you want but it's no good if your spine's different then what I did was I folded folded it in half and then because it's two signatures I folded one bit into the middle and then the other side into the middle then I folded it in half and that gives me the, the halfway mark and then I folded these down just about an inch and a half from the top and then I what I did was I really creased it and I inked the creases so that you would be able to see them I then marked the two with X's and the middle one because that will go, I'll use this in the spine as well so that my, um, the holes match these. But because it's two spines, I, it would mean that that would go that there and then the there and that so the spaces wouldn't be equal. So all I did was I took a pokey tool and just went in about three centimeters and poked it three centimeters and poked it the same with this one and this one and this one and this one bear with me one moment i am back it was my husband he was he's just made chocks for my my lights in my craft room because they were face they weren't facing down the way they were facing slightly to that way um yeah so then what i did was i took a japanese uh, screw punch and put it on the smallest, put a cutting mat underneath and just it didn't go right the way through because it's three a uh, three thousand micron um piece of chipboard I've got in here, but I was able to do it so far down. I did it a lot more than this um, 
then what I did was I turned it over I poked uh, my pokey tool through and then made sort of like little dents in so I was able to go through again with the Japanese screw punch if you haven't got a Japanese screw punch you can use your all and just poke it through and just keep turning it um, a Phillips screwdriver you know once you, you you've got your hole poked in and just gently put it through and it just gives a nice round finish because obviously you're going to get little bits of card or whatever your spine's made of I mean if you don't put chipboard in it'll go through quite easy but as you can see I've got um quite a lot there it is quite a thick one so and that just makes it easy for me because it is such a thick spine um and it is quite dense it makes it easy for the needle to go through now I don't want to stick my signatures in just yet because I've still got more stuff to put in but what you would normally do is you would find your middle which is so you have still got bits to to stick on um I had it right in the ah, right okay and you would make sure that it was level then what I do is I wrote top and it was the top of the journal I used and yeah this is a little bit bigger than a bit longer but you just make sure you can measure it if you want but I'm guesstimating that and probably I shouldn't because that's what gets me into trouble um, but usually when you've been crafting for a, a good while you can get a good see some of the some of the pages are deeper than the others um, and then all I would do that's about the same at those edges I'm going by this one because this is the and then what I would do is I would punch the middle one and put it through like that to that and the same with the other side I'm not going to do the whole thing then normally you, you so you have like th your three holes you put your your thread in through there you put obviously this one's the bottom layer so it would go through that one bring it out bring it through this one through the bottom one bypass the middle go through the whole layer through the whole layer bring it round and bring it back through the middle and back through the middle one so you have a long piece of thread here and you have your two end threads here make sure that your threads either side of the long piece then tie it um, in a knot or you can leave dangles so that you've got like little dangle leaves hanging from it and that is what you call a three hole pamphlet stitch I have done it before with journals it's not the easiest thing to do um, on a video which normally when I do it myself I've you know I'm, my head's right over um, but when you're trying to sort of like work at an angle so that the the video is showing but anyway so that's that's that um, so I'm going to finish off putting my bits and pieces in um, I'll show you some bits um, and what I have been doing, uh, which I didn't video because I videoed on the, the last one, is I've been, let's see if I can find one there. So I've been putting some of the tags through 
the embossing machine so i have a holly one um i have quite a few sort of like snowflakes and things like that i'll see if i can find um there the the envelope i put that through um and it's obviously debossed on that side but it makes it quite pretty looking um i always put my vellum through it so i've made vellum pockets um but I've done that in previous videos, so that still needs to go on there. Um, I've not done all the tags because I didn't want to do all of them. Um, I did this, this pocket. That was one of the ones from the masterboard and I just thought it was so pretty. Sorry, I'm off lane. I just thought it was so pretty um and it matched in with the colors and also one of the tags i made um from this card i know it doesn't look christmasy because it's got dragonflies on but again i thought it was so pretty there um another one with and i just edged it uh, this one actually is turquoise it's in stripes this vellum um but i've got a, a, i think it was the peacock feathers ink i used um i made myself a as you can see i've not stitched the middle um because that'll get stuck in when it's um put in i've been putting some um, bits and pieces I didn't um, do that when I've been stamping round rather than covering it with paper um, there I've put some stamps on just to decorate it and you can use um, all your bits and pieces you will get a proper look at it when it's um, there that's one I did um, just a book page pocket and what I did was I just did, did some blue and pink inking on it um, there's one that I uh, debossed and when I made my envelopes um, these the pocket envelopes I used the other part of the envelope to make little pockets and i put them through the embossing machine um that one went through like a music one um there's a big one that went through the music and that again is to go on there and that will be just a tuck spot i'm not sure if i'll keep the big tag on that one uh, that one's not got any embossing on it as I say I didn't do all of them um, again that one went through the music this one went through the the holly and I did some stamping so it's like holly and the ivy um, that was my reasoning behind it still got tags to put in there there's one that I put through a, like a poncettia and that was one of the the video that I did where um, we did stenciling on book pages for the autumn. Well, I just did it with the coffee dyed paper, but I did use them a lot in the autumn. And that was, I just did the, the circles that I'd made myself. I'd made the stencil using a punch in serial liners. And I thought that was quite pretty as well because it looks like snowballs. Um, that one's stuck in so we need a tag in that one there's another one and I just put a bit of embossed vellum over there and it's I just backed it on book paper um, and that was a little pocket you know when you get when you buy clothes um and you get like a little envelope with your buttons and things like that. 
that these need sticking on that's why that's on so i just covered that i had some it's it's like very very thick vellum but it's like plasticky um and it's it's iridescent so i used a bit of that just to to glue round and i thought that was quite stunning um in these pockets that one still needs to be stuck in but i did some poinsettias uh put some poinsettias i just did a pile of them and i did them all pink um and it's just to decorate bits and pieces um again that's that one I, the stamps that i did um that i did as a giveaway on my coffee page um i didn't cut out as stamps i just cut them square but you can see they've still got the the like little ridges um and i've been using these as uh like little clusters um that was another one that was just some that was one of the pockets i cut out of the the dies uh and i just embossed it and put some um it's like the fork um christmas art um and just again and that one was just some uh 12 by 12 paper i had and again i just folded it up made three pockets and that will sit there with those in um that's to go on there Again, another tag. Very, very little on it, but it's just the embossing kind of makes it quite pretty. There's another one. And that's to go behind that one. Um, although you can't see it because they are covered. Um, envelopes that I've done. Tags. And this one was um, just a stamp. And I stamped it in black and then I used my um, Art Glitter Glue, which is why I first bought Art Glitter Glue in the first place, was to use with fine art glitter. I just need to finish off stamping around there. So that's that's it. Um, it was just really to show you the how to do a, a template um, for adding your spines in and it if you you can keep the template and use it time and time again as long as your journal cover and papers are the same size every time mine aren't always the same size um because i like to change i've got some tall ones i've got some little short ones um but as i say i did go for the one signature and I mean that could maybe even it could even maybe have done three signatures. Um, I think maybe I need to not put so much in this one, but I mean you know I'm I'm liking it. Um, that's going to go on there. I don't want to cover up the little birdies, although the little birdies are upside down, so maybe I will. Never mind. Um. But yep, yeah, so that's it. And as I say, that can fit in there um, any way you want. But it's ideal for, for putting your pens in, any bits and pieces. So I'll see you in the next video. And the next video will be the definite flip through. <laughs> okay, bye.